Hello everyone. Welcome back to the second November installment of Poems That Changed Me. This is Dean Rader still. And today I'm going to talk about a poem that I absolutely love. Um, this is one of those poems I still remember the first time I read it and the experience of reading it. I was just completely blown away. And it's a poem by the late Philip Levine and it's called You Can Have It. My brother comes home from work and climbs the stairs to our room. I can hear the bed groan and his shoes drop one by one. You can have it, he says. The moonlight streams in the window and his unshaven face is whitened like the face of the moon. He will sleep long after noon and wake to find me gone. Thirty years will pass before I remember that moment when suddenly I knew each man has one brother who dies when he sleeps and sleeps when he rises to face this life. And that together they are only one man sharing a heart that always labors, hands yellowed and cracked, a mouth that gasps for breath and asks, am I gonna make it? All night at the ice plant, he had fed the chute its silvery blocks. And then I stacked cases of orange soda for the children of Kentucky, one, great boxcar at a time, with always two more waiting. We were 20 for such a short time and always in the wrong clothes, crusted with dirt and sweat. I think now we were never 20. In 1948, in the city of Detroit, founded by De La Mont Cadillac for the distant purposes of Henry Ford, no one wakened or died. No one walked the streets or stoked a furnace, for there was no such year. And now that year has fallen off all the old newspapers, calendars, doctor's appointments, bonds, wedding certificates, driver's license. The city slept. The snow turned to ice. The ice to standing pools or rivers racing in the gutters. Then bright grass rose between the thousands of cracked squares. And that grass died. I give you back 1948. I give you all the years from then to the coming one. Give me back the moon with its frail light falling across a face. Give me back my young brother, hard and furious with wide shoulders and a curse for God and burning eyes that look upon all creation and say, you can have it. That is such a great poem. So if you know Phil Levine's work, uh, you know that <clears throat> one of his great themes is sort of the, the blue collar experience, especially what it means to, um, to work, to labor. And one of the things that I think is uh, unique about his particular uh, style of, of writing is the dignity with which um, his characters endure. He avoids all stereotypes of the blue collared worker um, and he uh, avoids maudlin um, self-pitying reflections about um, economic struggle. This particular poem is one of my favorite to teach. My students don't love it as much as I do. In fact, I don't think anyone loves this poem quite as much as I do. But um, I think it's a great poem for beginning poets because um, Levine's diction and his um, syntax are very plain. It's very common. This is the opposite of a poem by, say, Emily Dickinson or Gerard Manley Hopkins, who um, is really ramping up uh, the poem meter. Um, he doesn't really rely on assonance or wordplay or line break. Um, the poem is written in quatrains, non-rhyming, um, very straightforward. It's almost like this poem is a, a short, short story, but um, lineated, except there are these moments of what Robert Bly calls leaping, um, these mini voltas, these turns in which the poem um, morphs from straight narrative into something magical. And this really begins um, when he gets to this last line of the stanza, I think now we were never 20. All right, that is not literally true. Um, he, <laughs> Phil Levine and his, his brother, he had, actually had a twin brother, 
were 20, and they were 20 in 1948. Levine was born in 1928. So he says in 1948, in the city of Detroit, um, that uh, Cadillac founded for the distant purposes of Henry Ford. Not true. That was not why <laughs> the town was founded. But um, what that does is suggest a kind of destiny. And then um, there's a kind of a magical realism in which the date never existed. Things fall off the newspaper. No one waked or died. Um, there was no such year. Um, which is to say that it's as though things never happened. There's a line in a Pablo Neruda poem that I talked about earlier where he writes, love is so short, forgetting is so long. And this poem gets at that um, paradoxical notion of time that um, seems to make the past uh, work inversely to the present. When he says we were 20 for such a short time, that too doesn't make literal sense. He was 20 for the exact same amount of time. <laughs> he was 19 or 15 or 16. Unless, you know, leap day happened. But there is a sense, in, in especially um, looking backward, and perhaps if you spend your 20s working, that um, that date, your youth, went by so fast. There's also this really lovely uh, use of language at the beginning um, when the moonlight is streaming in on his face. And that gets revisited at the end of the poem when he says, Give me back the moon with its frail light falling across a face. Give me back my young brother, hard and furious, with wide shoulders and a curse for God, and burning eyes that look upon all creation and say, You can have it. So the title uh, gets... Um, uh, repurposed two different times at the beginning and then at the end um, but in all three instances it's it's morphed a little bit it's changed a little bit so one of the things I often ask my students um, is to find the poetry in this poem like where does the poetry happen it doesn't happen by rhyme doesn't happen by um, metaphor it doesn't happen through line break so where's the poetry like what makes this poem a poem? And it happens in this, um, these imaginative leaps, these tiny, very subtle imaginative leaps um, that transport the poem into a kind of uh, epiphanic memory in which um, imagination and creation uh, merge. It's an unbelievable poem, a beautiful poem that um, changed so many things for me. And if you don't know this poem, I would ask you to reread it again. It's it's the best.